Charlie, we're a little bit late, but yeah, it's been great to get that way. Yeah. First on the agenda is the discussion of the runoff on Hot Street. Property and Internet Stream and Internet Stream. That, that's you, okay. Mr. Bernardo. I have these pictures here. They're in order according to what I'm going to say about them. So you can either pa you can pass them down. There's another set here. Oh, excuse me a minute. Yeah. Can we approve the minutes for the, for oh. the last meeting first, please? Okay. Uh, with just with a your typo error, uh, cross off the word R in one, two, three, four. We heard a request. If you look at it, uh, I don't uh, other, okay. Uh, yeah, you can take a look. I already did it on that one. Oh, well, then I, I moved it. We uh, uh, oh, okay. accept the meetings for the month. Accept accept oh. the uh, minutes from the December meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, let's go again. Sorry, Mrs. Bernardo, but on okay. your way. Uh, my name is Sylvia Bernardo. I live at 563 Hawk Street. I'm here today to discuss the runoff onto our property from 578 Hawk Street. Um, this issue has an order of conditions, and I have the DEP number if you need it. Yes, we got it. You what have the order mean? of conditions. Absolutely. Okay, according to what I understand about order of conditions, it states that all silt stays on the property <coughs> owner's land. Yep. Okay, to this date, that has not been the case. The property owner has attempted to migrate the problem, but has not succeeded. At the start of construction, we gave the property owner bales of hay to help with the problem. We also called the property owner to let him know the silt was rapidly accumulating in our pond. These are four, there are four separate issues with the runoff that I will discuss, and you have the pictures. First is the silt fence. Um, their photos are marked 1017 and 115. The property owner had installed a silt fence, but the fence came down shortly after. The fence was down from October until now, so the runoff onto our property continues. The sock. What conservation visited um, the property at 578 Hot Street and was told to put a sock in. The sock was installed by the property owner on the west south side of the property. It was installed two weeks later and two rainstorms later. The sock was laid across the property, but the water still ran around the sock and under the sock. There's two, there should be two photos there. Yeah. Um, then we have the problem with the sand. The sand. At the start of December, we witnessed a property owner shoveling sand with his bobcat into his driveway, presumably to help with the runoff. But this only made it apparently worse because sand is silt and goes into the road. Uh, there's also photos of that. And then we have what he made was what I call a waterfall. It is, on the, it is on the east side of the driveway. Apparently, he had been pushing his brush and his gravel onto the east side of that driveway to make his driveway bigger. And it caused like an enormous amount of water to come out of that property. It comes down so fast, it looks like, you know, I'm at Yosemite watching the waterfalls. Um, and then it not only did that, so it damaged our basement. We had to hire a contractor to dig a ditch because half my basement was flooded with the water that continues to come out of his property immediately. Uh, the, and I'm like, why is this costing me money? This water needs to stop. The flooding has been an issue from the beginning, from the time he started working there. It's always been an issue. So 
The runoff and the silt problem has not stopped. The runoff continues to flow onto our property and into our ponds. Additionally, our property is less than one mile to the salt marsh. We are also concerned about the silt polluting those waters. We ask the commission immediately issue a cease and desist to the property owner. I believe it's conservation's responsibility that the abutters property isn't damaged as a result of construction. Also, I'd like to, at the end of this, I'd like an explanation of exactly what a cease and desist is and when do you stop the cease and desist? Is he allowed to work on the, on the property or the house or, or does he have to fix the problem first? I don't know. That's it. How do you like that? <laughs> well, everyone has a copy of your recommendation plan. Really explicit. It covers all the points that she's made and then some. Uh, the special conditions for my local bylaw are attached, so, and they repeat the same thing. It's so, the property owner's responsibility to uh, the zero runoff. And apparently, uh, is there anything in your deed about uh, that? In you know, my I'd, deed? Yeah, yeah I know in my deed I'm allowed to drain water on my uh, neighbor's property. Mm -hmm. to, uh, no, because he's been there for 55 okay. years. Okay. Well, <laughs> th this goes back to like 1800s. But yeah, well, we need to rectify I, I don't think. We need to rectify that situation. <laughs> Draining water onto my property. It's coming down. If, if right we give us. him one week, Jim, to set up everything properly or initiate a fining process to. It should be done. What? Personally, not by a, by a letter, should appear at the property. And Sean, he has a oh. copy of the order of conditions that he's, he's going to have. Can I say something? He doesn't even have his DEP number that anybody can see posted on the road, next to his house, wherever you're supposed well, to be. We can address that issue too, but. Yeah. We're more so, concerned with the. Uh, I understand. But. I don't think we need a week to do anything. He knows that this is supposed no, to be no, done. No, no, but I say, I'm, I'm saying uh, once he is notified, he has to have everything complete so, done properly within a week. There's no way he could complete what he needs to do in a week. No, I'm saying about barriers, siltation, proper siltation barriers to get everything done. More than okay. one. <clears throat> Jack already mentioned this a few times because of the space between the house in the street, there should be multiple. Yeah. yeah. All, of this, all of this should be taken care of with, uh, as far as what, uh, what the they call The original order of conditions said they had to put a silt fence along the property line. If and you then look cross at over to the driveway. Mm. I don't think that's at all. Yeah, I mean, uh, with the span and the distance and everything that's going on, it's got to be multiple. You got to put, call it what you want, uh, water bars in there, multiple uh, barriers, and he's got to get his driveway to run off, not down but off, and hold it on the property. So, I mean, it's uh, um, uh, with the way it from the loose thing, it's uh, the driveway's not going to get it swallowed up in uh, solid. No, but it doesn't have to, Charlie. It, it's uh, be whatever it is. If you put in, like I say, what they call water bus, so you can control the runoff. Uh, you can't. You can't leave a, an open roadway, oh, which is a driveway is so. like right straight down the road. And it's steep. Yeah. And it's steep. And there's a long distance, and it's not stabilized uh, material. You available Saturday? Um, as far as I know, I should be, yeah. Well, why don't we uh, yeah. set a meeting with the... Uh, I won't, I'm not going to be here. Well, no, I mean, we'll go down and... I'm not going to be here. Yeah. Head to the Caribbean? Yep. <laughs> I can be there any time. <laughs> <laughs> what time? It's ever good for you guys. Uh -huh. 10 or 11. What time do you usually get there? What time? He's still there. He gets Is there he on the weekend, anywhere between 9 and 11 would be safe. 10 o'clock? 
kind of thought. In, in this picture here, there's all silk fence running up here that you might as well yeah, not they, have. They, they've seen that. Oh, you've seen that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the, the silk fence, first of all, uh, someone was there for silk fence. It's way too long a distance, and if it's not installed properly, you're not going to hold it back. The biggest. The biggest, the biggest, the biggest problem, problem, the biggest has. problem, Bill, is all these guys around here don't know how to work on a hill. They don't. And you try and explain it to them, and I'm not picking any on anybody, but they don't know how to work on a hill. I mean, that's quite obvious this. to me, John. Yeah, and they try but and what, I'm, what I want to explain to you is that when he made his driveway, he just pushed material, everything that was in there, he just pushed it. And, it, and, it's, and, it, and it's about this high, and it rims the whole length of his east side of his property line. And all the water that come from the three lots above him used to hit that and kind of meander easy down along everybody's grass. And, but now it has infiltrated that burn. And it just, it's just coming right out this high off the ground, and it's, and it's mud. That's what he needs to fix first. Then he's got to do the driveway. Then he's got to do the area that he cleans out. And I'm not sure about that area anyway. Isn't there something about uh, over an acre? For what? Not when you follow the northern. Uh, an acre, two acre or something? The land disturbance permit doesn't apply to the conservation commission. I said the land disturbance. That's what I meant, land disturbance. No, it doesn't apply to conservation. OK, all right. <coughs> but every time that silt has come onto my property, I've notified him, and I've notified you guys, and I record all that. So I'm, I've had it about up to here. With us too. Huh? With us too. Yeah. <laughs> With you guys too. <clears throat> So I'm building a case against everyone. <laughs> 10 o'clock Saturday. 10 o'clock Saturday. I'll bring you a copy of the other conditions just in case he has yeah. uh, had right. them for a while. Ask away, Sylvia. I'm sorry it's to interrupt you. Actually, it's one of my better jobs. Yeah. yeah. To no avail. So I'm going to ask you something. He has no trespassing signs. So does that mean for you? No. 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 OK. For you. For me. For you. Correct, of course. Oh. <laughs> That's technically not illegal. It has to be posted in a different fashion. Anyway. So, now, when you go there, what do you tell him? Like, how to fix it? the amount of time to fix it. Well, we're not going to bring a list with us, but I'm pretty sure we have a good idea of what we're going to tell him. Yeah, so uh, does he have an amount of time to comply to that? Uh, it would be uh, the right thing to do, yes. Like, how long? Like, am I going to have to wait through 15 rainstorms? I think a week would be sufficient. A week, okay. Because, you know, people are slow at the, on the uptake sometimes. <coughs> And then, <laughs> my other question is, so a week goes by and he has done nothing, what happens? We'll issue an enforcement of him. We'll make him do what he has to do. You'll make him do it. Up to this point, we haven't uh, issued any enforcement orders against right. him. Right, okay. Um, Charlie, okay, his house is way out of the wetland area. If we issue an enforcement order, is that going to is that going to deal just with the wetland no, area? We're dealing with the wetland area in front of his house. Yeah, right. He's polluting the wetland area, and and then further down, ponds on the adjoining property. So what I'm saying, what will an enforcement order actually stop or do? It's make not going to stop him from building a house. We'll stop. No. Well, make him correct the runoff. Well, that's what it says right here that he's required to, uh, if an enforcement order is going to halt all construction. And obviously, he has to fix the problems that he's creating with the neighbors. So that's what I'm asking. Yeah. The enforcement order will stop construction on this house. Yes. He can't put his siding up or none of that. 
Yes, it fixes okay. problem. No. Okay, okay that, that's, what I, that's what I was after. I mean, we can make that point to them when we visit so that there's no hassle. Okay, that, that's what I was after. So that would stop all action except the reparation of the problem. Yeah. So he, he couldn't do a septic system, he couldn't do, oh, he can't do anything. No. Okay. And we make that he, can't, he can't go in and put siding up in his house and... Uh, um, well, I guess he could go inside the house as long as he's not doing anything outside. I'm pretty sure that the inside of the house is, uh, is open again. Yeah. Okay. The only thing I worry about is that you go down there and tell them this is what you should do like Jim did, and he does it, and it doesn't work. And he said, well, I did what he told me to do. And what do you want us to do? Put it in ourselves? Huh? No. Huh. But but if I mean, if, if it doesn't, just put it in there, Bill. If it doesn't work, he's got to come up with something else. Like first hire of somebody? All, first of all, it's not up to us to go down there and hold his hand. That's what to I'm trying to say. Self-fence. So I mean, That's either, what I'm either to say. he takes our suggestions or he hires an engineer. Well, maybe that would be the best thing for him to hire an engineer. Well, I mean, you know, it's, say, it's, uh, because <coughs> Jim went down and talked to him. Yeah, well, it, it's uh, he did what I suggested. The, well, yeah. he actually suggested that the, the sock fence. Yeah, and and I knew that those things worked pretty well, but not on that steep hill. There's too there's too much there's too, too much length. There's too much length. <coughs> But Jack has suggested before he has other properties that they be sequential yeah, no, I mean, it, it's, areas. Uh, yeah. So that's, anyway, that's, no, I mean, if you let, if let, you let, go let's, over any time any time you work on steep ground, you cut in what they call water bars, and, water. and all you have to do is put a light swale in there. So any of that runoff has got to get to slow down, maybe it'll keep running, but it'll just come over. And you, you put them in such a way so it runs left or right, or just left or just right, or slow it down. And like I say, the picture of his driveway, that's wide open. Oh, the there's driveway, no ditches, and then he put sand on it. No he, ditches, I told no him, I said, you put sand on it, that thing is going to run right down the sand. He put sand the day you came. I, I saw that, I couldn't believe it. Neither could as I. That's just going to run right out. And it did. He probably doesn't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's dirt, it's dirt. But All anyway. right. Okay. 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 We'll see what happens. Um, I don't know if we want to have uh, Brian's here to um, talk about the uh, turtles, or should we go on to the property that uh, and and that'll make Brian happy too. <laughs> hey, Brian. Yes, sir. Okay. I just I, I thought you were sleeping. Nope. You ready now? Um, Oh, yeah. yeah. You want to, well, how about the number two thing? What's that involved, Charlie? Uh, it doesn't involve us, actually. They, they're going to replace poles on Main Street, and it's an example of the wetland that, so that's not a problem. Okay, so we, 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 the only thing we got left is this uh, number, no, we got, we got the, the, yeah, the land and Brian. Right. So it, it's not going to take long. Everybody's read this. Okay, Brian, why don't you come here and take a look at this, if you want to. Okay. I think no. It's what I talked to you about earlier. Okay. I think you'll like this. No, because that's going to be what he's going to be in involved in later, later, right? No idea. Brian, he's going to be not involved, involved in this. Oh no, no. This is the turnaround on one thirty-eight. Yeah, but isn't that part of Broad Cove where the turtles are? No, where the turtles are. Tur there's no turtles here. Oh, I thought the turtles were here. Okay. <laughs> no. Well, that's okay. Then you can hold off. Just sit there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I won't move. Don't eat anything. Just that's that. <coughs> you, can somebody make a motion? Or? Okay. Yeah. We have an offer here from Simon Construction to purchase a parcel of land of approximately five acres uh, on Broad Cove. It borders the southern part of Dayton, 138. Uh, bordering Somerset land and the 
price he's willing to sell it for is $20,000. Uh, the property is uh, a book number 19093, uh, page 85. Right here, <clears throat> okay, and um, I'll move that we purchase this property as part of our conservation uh, to protect Broad Cove. I have a question. We started off getting property on Broad Cove and I thought the idea was to get all of the marshland. Wait, there has to be a second first before discussion. Well, I'm, I'm just posing a question to your proposal. Okay. And. I'm in favor of getting the property, but I'm also in favor of getting any property that becomes available to us around Broad Cove. Not select the properties, all the properties. My point. Okay. Good point. Well, I made a little resistance the last time. We did have an offer that we didn't take up. Right. Okay, motion was made. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Brian. We'll need a couple of copies of the minutes for our new accountant and for the uh, select. I'd like a, a copy of the uh, proposal so that I can't hear. Give them one of these. What? Huh? Mm. Yeah. Is that what you want? Take one, Charlie. Give me the, take the bottom one. Give me the top one. the turtles. So. Ready? Where are the turtles? Which turtles? Well, you, you want the top the, of the where are the turtles? That's yours. Yeah. You I'll take that one. Okay. That's okay. That's, I thought they were in the broad cove here. Don't send them away. Yeah. <coughs> Actually, the, the most productive spot he has at the trap <coughs> is where my stream comes into the salt marsh that's being uh, Filtered. Just in the middle, let's get the point. When your, your stream goes. Cross, one, cross Elm Street, cross 138, right down where he traps. Where, where is it? Is that north or south of the uh, Apple Orchard? South, south. So, okay, south. So, so that stream does go into the uh, Broad Cove then? Absolutely. Yeah. It's the only place it goes. Okay. Goes from my pond right down to the. That's why, this is why I showed you that. That's there because it's supposed to be there. No, but that's what he, <coughs> he's going to create a problem with that. No, he's not going to create a problem okay, with well, that. Well, just that guy right there will tell him where the manure pile ought to be on my property. And uh, I would ask each member to assign the conflict of interest uh, sheet yeah, that you okay. all have in your packet. Right. I started, okay. okay. You don't have to hear it, just name it. <laughs> okay. Is that a new one, if you've already signed one? Yep, you've got to sign the uh, acceptance. It's in your packet, in there. <clears throat> but if I've already signed one, I need to sign it again? It's there somewhere. Yeah, I have it, but I've already signed it in the past. No, I just got it every it's year. Oh, it's a new one, I got it. It just proves you got it, that's it. Well, I don't have one of them. Because it makes it clear to tell them quick after you got two of No. I just printed my name. I didn't put That's it. That's all right. I don't know what I'd do if you weren't here, John. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Eight. Yeah, yeah. One eight twenty. I just saw you in there. Yeah, yeah. 
Now we can give Brian our undivided attention. That's right. How's that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think I'll be your easiest matter this evening. So for the past four years, the Taunton River Watershed Alliance has been conducting research on the Diamondback Terrapins. So a state listed, state threatened turtle that lives in the estuaries uh, of our coastlines from Wellfleet, Cape Cod to Corpus Christi, Texas. There's a sizable population, we think, in the Taunton River. We've been trapping them, tagging them, measuring them, releasing them in an effort uh, cooperatively with Mass Wildlife <coughs> to try to get an understanding of the population in the Taunton River. Uh, work had been done 10, 15 years ago in Sonic Bay. Uh, a little bit of work, but there are no population estimates. We've identified three nesting areas that uh, no one seemed to know about before, at least not officially. One of them is in Broad Cove. So we do trap Sona Bay, Broad Cove, and then the Taunton River main stem from Mother Brook, almost in Fall River on the Freetown side, up to the Three Mile River. Uh, so we're trying to figure out the size of the population, the age structure of the population, the sex structure of the population, and the distribution within the river. Like, what are they using? What parts of the river? Broad Cove nesting area has been our um, tough one. It's on the um, north side of the old railroad grade, where they come together, but the channel goes between them. And that's your property, right? Yes. Um, they're nesting there, quite a few of them which Bill brought to our attention and we started looking there. And when we look at the right times, we find them there nesting. When we find them nesting, we protect the nest with some wire mesh, we stake it down, we mark it with a date because we have to go back in 90 days and start looking for little ones to let them out. Um, we have a nesting area in the Sonic Bay that's in someone's backyard and they're very, very enthusiastic supporters and the guy uh, does a lot of the work for us. We, we drop um, we drop off materials too many takes care of it. Broad Cove's harder because we've got to carry everything in the boat and we have all the other trapping equipment in the boat. So our request number one is we'd like to just leave a tote with some equipment there which would only be some wire mesh pieces, nothing worth money, and uh, some ground staples, maybe some little metal tags to write on and, and a hammer. But it's your property, so we didn't want to just leave stuff out there. Uh, we wanted to ask you first. Uh, there's some opportunities for, in addition to Kaylee, one of our new interns, uh, maybe some citizen scientists who might be interested in the town, uh, and it would be just helping us catch them when they're there. Right. So protect this nesting nest. area, is it right inside the uh, uh, Pleasant Street Bridge? Um, yeah, but it's it's the the little peninsula that sticks out. So it's a railroad the, track. The old railroad right on the railroad tracks, okay. right from the very tip. I think there's a North. stone bench there. Right? Yep, there okay. is. Right where the stone okay. bench. Well, from there. Because the first property is north. not ours. It's private. The, the marshy area. Right. Just, okay. So they don't <laughs> nest in the marsh. They only nest where it's high and dry. Okay. Um, they nest right up on the railroad bed. Right. So when they, whenever they put that railroad bed in a long time ago they probably created this little run of nesting habitat because they need that high and dry sandy place to nest. Um, so because we could only get at it from the boat, we were hoping to just leave a tote with some of that equipment there if, if that would be acceptable to you folks as the property owners. No, I, I certainly don't mind. I don't have any problem. That would be fine. So long as you mark it so that no one yeah. messes around with it. That's all. And, and we understand someone might mess around with it and. So it goes, but uh, we've only ever been able to protect half of a nest there. And we got, I think, two hatchlings where we've gotten a hundred out of a Sonic Bay. We've been able to protect them, incub let them incubate right in the ground and let them out. Um, 
was it um, raccoons and stuff? Yeah, yep. yeah, raccoons, coyotes, skunks, that all <coughs> decimated. Um, so that's the first request. The second request is we do have a whole slideshow. We got uh, Totten River Watershed and the Aggie School. We have a couple <coughs> of live terrapins that we have permits to have for education animals. If we were, would like to offer the Conservation Commission, uh, and all you would have to do is, uh, we could put you on as a co-host. We could deliver the presentation at the library or the school or here one night for just the town for people who are interested to know about these, these turtles in their backyard. If you haven't seen one, they'll blow your mind. You won't believe it's a real thing. They have, you know, some have bright white skin with black lava, lava lamp marks on them and, and uh, you, you won't believe the thing lives around here. Um, we, only, we only have males that are this big, but the females are about five pounds, some of our big females. So we have a whole slide presentation. We can bring live turtles. We can bring the traps and the, and, uh, and just do that for the town for, for the pleasure of uh, telling people about their own backyard. And if you guys would like to co-host it, it would, you'd have to do nothing. We'd just say we're co-hosting it together, you and the TRWA, the Taunton River Wild yeah, I'd, I'd like to do that because I, I know a, a number of people that are interested. And, and I'm, I'm sure they'd love to come. Yeah, we can work out the, the particulars later. Yeah. Um, and uh, we could do all that for you guys, or with you guys. Okay. Are these uh, migratory, or do they, no? No, well, we're not sure. And that's one of the things we're trying to figure out. Um, we'll show you in the, in the uh, when we do this evening, we tag them, we put in a pit tag, a passive, integrated transponder um, and it's a little your, your your dog might have it your vet calls it a microchip same thing so we put that in their back leg up near their near their rump and we scan them what we're trying to figure out is where they go in the river so right now we don't think they're going upstream of the Berkeley Bridge but we're going to add a couple traps uh, to see and to see how that might change as sea levels rise you know, does the saltwater wedge go farther upstream and now the terrapins start going upstream? Um, we don't know how far south they go. They probably go right down to Mount Hope Bay. And then if they do, right over in um, 100 Acre Cove, there's a big population that uh, some folks at URI have been studying for 30 years. Um, so do ours ever mix with theirs? Do theirs mix with ours? We found now that we have animals moving from Broad Cove to Asonet Bay, from moving from Grassy Island to Sonnet Bay. So they're moving all around from Grassy Island to Mother Brook. Um, and we're gonna add some more traps to try to figure out how far they're going and they how move, many there are. They move that great a distance. We've got them moving, um, I think five miles we had one move. Wow. Now that's over at least a year. I don't know the exact dates where we captured and recaptured, but that's at least a year. So they're, they're moving around quite a bit. Do you have problems by these uh, pogey boaters that net? Um, I don't know. I mean, these are the big commercial guys out there. Um, the river, yeah. We see them out there. Uh, we only trap, we end our trapping usually by August 1st because we don't really catch many in August. We start trapping slightly in May, um, where some of our, our younger folks, they go out and kayak around. Once school's out, because I work at the Aggie School, once school's out, I can then join them with the motorboat. So the school lets us use the school's motorboat to, to do this work. Um, so that's where we put a lot of traps out. We put like 15 traps out. We've seen them out there. I'd love to get, I wish I could get on there and just see what they're scooping up. Um, that's one of the things we're trying to figure out is um, how big is the population and is it increasing, stable, or decreasing? We have no idea. No one, the state has no idea. So actually we're having another meeting with Mass Wildlife next week, a week from today, to plan, like they're all excited about it, to plan this. So... Um, this will be, be our fifth season. The Arc Bait is the only folks that are uh, pogey fishing in the river. Yeah. You know, on the big commercial scale. Yeah. Well, Arc Bait wouldn't be netting in the river. No, no. They stop at yeah. uh, 
they actually stop right at Somerset Marina. Which yeah, is just south of Conspiracy Island. Island. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're out in the big water. I don't, <coughs> I, I bet they, they don't often bump into a turtle, but they do move around. Um, the males only get about this big, and we don't catch many of them. Right now we have a very skewed sex ratio, which is odd. We have a lot of females, but the females are big. So we think they're swimming out in the, in the open water because nothing's going to bother them. The little males, um, you know, who knows, a big striper might easily take one of those. Or, or I mean, the place is full of ospreys and eagles now. Um, they might pick up a little male. Um, so we have a, we, I think we figured out how to catch more males. And that's something we're interested in to see if the sex ratio is really skewed that way. Um, or if it's just where we're not where our methods are biased towards the big females. So, um, but we can work out a, a, an evening or an afternoon or Saturday, Sunday afternoon. It's easy for me now. I, I moved to Dighton in March, so. Um, yeah, that's right. I'm around. Dighton resident. Yeah, we bought an old house on Walker Street, so. Um, we're, I'm happy to help out the town now. Um, Library's not open on Sunday. Okay. Well, I'm sure I could. Not that I'm aware of anyway. Well, I'd like to say I'm sure I could get a uh, room at the Aggie School, but sometimes it gets busy there. But I mean, I guess that's how we can we can work it out. Is that something you consider during the open house Is it in the fall? Does that make uh, sense? Where you get uh, a lot of you, passerbys, you a, lot get of, a lot, lot of traffic, you get a big population. Um, we we could. That's usually more of the the school stuff, and this this is not so much. Other than the school letting us use the boat. Um, this, this project is more of a Taunton River Watershed project, um, Watershed Alliance project. And I noticed they have one for a pet. I'm sorry, what? One of the turtles. Yeah, there was um, one of our students who works for a wildlife rehab center now, she called a year ago and said, hey, we have one and the state doesn't want it released. It was surrendered to them. It's illegal to keep. Someone had it and gave it in. And uh, um, we have three that live in the museum. I don't need any more. What do you feed them? Um, just commercial aquaculture food. And uh, so I had the Tongue River Watershed Alliance <laughs> wanted one for this effort to use as an education animal. And so uh, they got some equipment and we got them set up. In fact, I gotta go check on it. I heard the filter's not working so well. So, um, <clears throat> so that'd be it. It was, um, about leaving the box on the, somewhere in the area of that stone bench and um, yeah, put it under that stone bench, help protect it a little bit. <clears throat> we could try that. Um, now, is there a pathway just to the north of and then loop around? Well, you, you got to watch the tide, and yeah. you got to you got to go in along the elder elder line from the road. You know? Okay. And uh, yeah, we've always just pulled up with the boat because we're in the cove checking traps. Um, so we'll pull up um, if it's sort of at nesting time. And uh, we have we have found them there. Unfortunately, we usually get there late, and you know the nests are already gone. But for the few times that we found a good nest, um, we want to be able to protect it and try to get some more some more recruitment out of the the Broad Cove nesting area. Good. That's what we would like to. All right. Now, okay. Um, I mean, I'm thinking we this property that we just uh, voted on that has. A small highland area. I don't know if it would no, be. No, they, 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 that's they need it. brackish water, and, and they need a stream, a stream coming into the salt. Are you talking for nesting? Yeah. yeah. Um, if it's if it's open, so it's very sunny and it's you it's, know it's sort it's of woody. sandy. Yeah. If it's if it's shady, they they are not gonna nest. They there. Do, they won't use it. But um, they need the sun to incubate. Yeah. They want it out in the sun. Um, the end of that railroad bed that juts out is, is perfect. Yeah, yeah it's pretty good there. Um, now, okay, here's something. Could it be that, I mean, 50 feet, 100 feet, could that whole area just be fenced off to keep the... Um, to keep the... It's very funny. We talked about that uh, with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for a different species in Plymouth. Um, they have a similar topography. Um, maybe, but I assume you want 
to make that accessible for the public so the public can enjoy it. Someday we will, yeah. Um, no, I mean just just where the, where they're going to nest on that on that incline. Oh well, they nest they nest pretty far north up that railroad grade. You know, farther the, than I would have guessed. Where, where, where you would where, where, where the old right of way <coughs> used to be across from Sousa's property. Yeah. Uh, they nest all the way to there from the wow. point all the yeah. way to that. Hmm. Uh, okay. this, the, where the Susan property Almost behind the um, the first house that you would come to. If you walk on the railroad bend, that house is off to your right. Almost all the way to where you're behind that first house. Exactly. They'll nest they're all the way down to the point. And, and quite a few up on that north right. side of it. I was surprised. And in and, 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 uh, and Hundred Acre Cove, yep. they travel over half a mile to get to a nesting site. Wow. And they go up a hill. Yeah, they go up a big hill. So this is a this is a pretty good spot. Um, yeah. And there's there's three sites in the Sonnet Bay, and this is the only one we know of in Broad Cove. There might be others, but we don't know about them. I don't know where they'd be. Yeah. We sent out postcards. Dr. River Watershed Alliance sent out postcards. I sat on the computer one night going through all the property on the Yeah, all the way down, <laughs> and uh, we got one hit back from Somerset, just south of of the line. So she's seen him in her yard. I said, oh, when you see one, like call this number. Like, keep an eye on it. We want to protect your nest. Um, but you got to be at there, right? You know, in that about June, um, perfect is it like ten in the morning if it's a high tide. I got, I got a, nest. I got a friend like Eel Gibbons. Yeah. Yeah, he's a real. He knows exactly when they're going to nest. Yep. In the zone of well, and that's what we'd According like. According to the tide and yep. the temperature. And, he, 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 and we'd love to involve people like that. He, I, I want to. Yeah. He'd be, he'd be here tonight. People well, you who, know, he, he'll lay on the beach in the dark and wait till the sun comes up and count the ones that are coming yep. up the beach. And, they, and, and if people are there and they have the time, because a lot of that's just the time. Yeah. So if, you know, if someone likes to hang out there and bring a, bring a folding chair, and wait, and when they see them, you know, we'll show them how to how to do the nest protection. It's pretty simple, um, and uh, um, they get elaborate in Bristol. They do. They do. They, they use a, a big they cylinder. Cage about this yep. high and yep, foot and a half by a foot and a half, and and they're, they, they have, have people monitor. It's monitoring nice and sandy every there. Day. But I noticed, I'll tell you, digging holes on Walker Street. <laughs> I wouldn't want to dig those in and dive and boy, there's some rocks in this ground. Oh. <laughs> I've learned it the hard way. Um, but yeah, any you know, families with kids, uh, retired folks who have time to be there, whoever would like to be um, involved, we like to get the the citizens involved. So, like I said, we got that one guy. Thankfully, they nest in his backyard, and uh, he's very, very supportive. Protect he actually saw us trapping behind his house, and he called the EPOs. And he thought we were like poaching turtles. So luckily it was, um, you know, Marty, Stephen Marty. Yeah. He had called, he's a big okay. reptile nerd. And he called me and said, I think this is your stuff. Tell me what it looks like. I said, oh, you're standing here and you can see this thing, this thing. He goes, yeah. He says, you got to come see this guy, Jack. It's full of nests and he's really interested in helping out. And he's been helping us for four years. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. So that's it. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Brian. And, um, and, and let's get something organized so yep. we can get the people together that we should get together. Yep, and if you want to work on that other guest that you talked about, whatever works for that person. I mean, yeah. And it doesn't have to be soon. We could do it <coughs> a month or two from now. It doesn't matter to me. Right. Okay. The, the presentation's in, in the flash drive ready to go, and the turtles live in the museum at the Aggie School. So. Good, good, good. All right. I've got one... Chestnut burr, what do you call it? What do you call it? Yep. Burr. And uh, I put a little net around it. Mm. By the time I got there, uh, two of the nuts have fallen out. And On the trees we planted? No. Oh. Over here. Uh, oh, no. Actually, yeah, actually yeah. right out front. No, you get so I got one nut in my garage hanging <laughs> in the cold air. You're making Bill giggle here. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to plant that in the spring. Yep. And then I'll put it out here if I get it to grow. Yeah. And hopefully this year I'll get some more. And what I want to do is, is put them up on Chestnut Street. We have a town property on uh, yep. uh, Chestnut Just road protected because everything in the world wants to eat those chestnuts. Um, 
Everything is programmed around here to eat chestnuts. Me too. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're good. Yeah. <laughs> and if you've never had the American chestnuts, they taste totally different. They're, I know. They're sweet. They're like golden raisins. Yeah. Used to be free. All right, well, thank you very much. I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll email you about, um, we'll set up a okay. time. All right, thank you. All right, Brian. Anything else? Well, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn at 8 Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.